Alright, so a little bit of a disclaimer before we get into the details of the video. It has been brought to our attention that whilst the footage was being recorded, the only dungeon modifiers that were active on testing were a bunch of negative dungeon modifiers, so fear not for there sure are a lot more engaging modifiers than the ones that are shown in this video. So far we can see some pretty, um interesting ones. They can vary in a lot of different forms and natures. For example, this one right here. Enemies are 50% smaller. Who doesn't want to fight a tiny calamity crab or even some tinier sea slugs in the ocean trench? I personally don't understand the change in size apart from the fact of making hitboxes a little bit smaller which is a pain in the ass but hey it is what it is. What are dungeon modifiers? It's a very new and never seen before way of making your dungeon easier or harder by putting a small but impactful change to every dungeon you either encounter in a realm or gets popped via a key. If you ever played World of Warcraft, think of it like a Mythic Plus dungeon of fixes, where there are specific keywords which relate to different effects on the dungeon. So, how does a rating system work? With dungeon modifiers there are 5 tier of dungeons ranging from D to S, however unfortunately you can't get an S tier spider then, as hilarious as that would be. Different modifier tiers are assigned to different dungeons depending on your overall difficulty. Here is the overall way that it will function. Negative modifications will have a negative score, and then positive modifications will have a positive score respectfully. Within your dungeon there may be a modification that has a score of negative 8, which you could imagine could be quite detrimental, but then it's balanced out by other mods which could make up for the deficit to make the score add up to negative 1, 0, or 1. So in this case let's say it will add up to 0. As we have a score of negative 8 with our first mod, from basic mathematics we can conclude that the other mods will have to be either of these scores to add up to zero. I hope that makes sense. And for the bit people are probably the most interested in knowing, here are some of the confirmed modifications that will be applied to dungeons. So there's the enemy health pool, enemy defense, enemy projectile damage, enemy projectile speed, enemy projectile lifetime, cooldown of the enemy's shot behavior, size of the enemies, and the XP granted by the enemies. An important thing to note is that Deco will not be rolling out all of the modifications at once, but they'll slowly be released as more people get used to them. When you open or find a pirate cave, the modifiers will be rated either D or C, with of course C being arguably superior in terms of loot and quality of gameplay. One of my speculations is that it will not be set in stone that D rank will have these effects and S ranks will have these effects, though it will determine the quantity of good and bad effects. For example, if you had a B rank loss tools, it may have one negative effect and two positive effects. And if it was A rank, it would have three positive effects and no negative effects. I believe S rank would be like a bit of a boosted version of A with three positive effects, but way better. Dungeon modifiers will cover pretty much every dungeon in the game, ranging from the pirate cave all the way up to your favorite exaltation dungeons, such as the nest, fungals, and the lost halls. See, David has this funky looking graphic in the left displaying what modifiers are active in the dungeon that you're in. And honestly, who knows? Some of the modifiers may not even be strictly number based. What about the terrain? You know the obstacle rooms and the lost halls, what if they were filled with magma or pure evil for example? So far everything is work in progress, meaning we don't know all of the crazy ideas Deco will come up with. Maybe enemies could be even smaller than 50% or there could be even two bosses. From what we've seen so far, there are three sages of those buffs and debuffs reaching from 5% to 15% of less loot. That might mean there's also a 15% chance of more loot if you're lucky enough to get that modifier. Generally speaking, the whole concept of modifiers is just a way to randomize dungeon with either rewarding or potentially punishing the player. It's a great way to bring some form of variety and challenge into monotonous dungeons, though it may sometimes have a negative impact. I'm personally very excited to see what this update brings to the table. Decker could have particularly disclosed the logistics of key refining just yet, but the base premise for it was to give the player the opportunity to reroll, upgrade, or remove modifications from a key. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you get a better understanding of the upcoming dungeon modifiers. Thank you for watching, and be sure to drop both myself and Arrowstorm a follow on Twitch, and maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel if you liked the video. Peace out!